Hello and welcome to Technofield.de. My name is Klaus and I would like to unbox the Mobistel Sinus F3 together with you. It's the third Android phone of the um, manufacturer Mobistel, internationally also sometimes known under the brand of Elsom. Basically, phones built in China but imported to Germany and Europe by uh, Mobistel uh, slash Elson. Uh, this is actually the smallest of the three phones. They have the T1 which is a 4.3 inch uh, phone, the T2 which is a 5 inch uh, phablet almost. Uh, this one is 4 inch so uh, smaller than the two of them. Uh, basically featuring the same specs. A uh, main difference besides the size is a different camera. It only has a 5 megapixel camera. Um, a little bit smaller battery which makes sense with a smaller display. Um, and uh, one nice uh, addition here is that out of the box it already has Android 4.1.1 as you can see quite prominently here on the box uh, they are actually selling that as the biggest feature of the phone this is interesting even even not uh, even Android is much smaller printed on here okay let's free it from its plastic bag here we go here we have the 4 inch um, screen of the Mobitel Sin Sinus F3 um, it also has a, a wide VGA, VGA um, resolution, so that's 800 by 480 pixels. We see three capacitive buttons down here, um, which are um, hard to be seen when they're not lit. Um, th there is back, um, home and menu. Uh, let's have a look at the back. Um, unfortunately, and it's, uh, it is again a shiny back that attracts fingerprints like crazy. I just uh, um, cleaned it um, before reboxing it again for you. Uh, let's clean it again. Um, so it's 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 always looking greasy. That's 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 the problem of these shiny backsides. One thing that is a little bit harder to see in the video is that uh, there is a glimmering. A metallic finish to it, a very subtle thing. You you don't always see it. I think right now when you when you're close to those reflections of a light, then you can see that. That's quite a fancy thing. Uh, it looks nice, and it's maybe not. It's maybe that subtle that it doesn't get uh, look too cheap or, or, or annoying over time. Um, so let's open the phone, insert the battery, or well, before we start with that, let's have a look at the rest of the package. After all, this is still an unboxing, right? So uh, what do we have here? We have the, the plug. Uh, this looks pretty much like an HTC plug, I think, with this kind of rounded form, but there's of course no HTC logo on it. Um, then there is the battery. It's a 1,600 milliamp battery, which should be fine for a 4-inch uh, screen. We have a headset, um, which is uh, obviously the, the the same one as with the other Sinus models, with this uh, interestingly uh, angled uh, um, plug here, 45 degrees more or less. Um, I'm quite sure this will also be a Sony or Nokia compatible a headset so for most of the other headsets from other uh, Android phones you will need an ad adapter because it has those two contacts here um, switched and um, if, you, if you plug that into a Samsung for example it will sound horrible and vice versa. Um, USB cable of course, micro USB for the phone, uh, USB for either charging plug or for um, the, the computer to, to uh, also synchronize phone and transfer data. Uh, then there is a rather thick manual. This is the German version here. Uh, uh, interestingly also really a German only manual. Usually we have these uh, these kind of manuals with like 20 languages included. This is just one language. Um, I don't know if the uh, English or other language versions will also have such an extensive documentation but I find that quite interesting. Um, it probably makes sense because of the price um, of this phone. Uh, this this is really a good offering for uh, um, people starting with smartphones, kind of an entry phone, so to say. Uh, and there it makes sense uh, to help uh, customers who are new to that world. Talking about price, um, the um, the customer recommended price 
here in Germany is, um, well, the, no, the producer recommended price, sorry, is 149 euros. Right now it is uh, already available for below 130 euros. I, th I think 128 was the last price uh, tonight. So um, this is really uh, a rather cheap price for a phone that boasts a dual um, core processor and um, well I'll start opening it and inserting the battery while talking a bit more about the specs so dual core one one gigahertz uh, processor that's the MediaTek MTK uh, 6577 uh, so the same processor as in the other Sinus phones and as in the Alcatel 997D that I recently reviewed uh, it is also a dual SIM phone as you can see here we have the two SIM slots full size SIM cards um, can be added here uh, and there is a micro SD card slot which uh, should accept uh, 32 uh, gigabyte cards. Um, the um, battery is uh, surprisingly thin. Um, maybe because of that, it is rather it looks rather large from this perspective. Uh, let's insert it here. And um, yeah, what else do we have spec wise? We have a camera here which is five megapixel. I think I mentioned that uh, already an LED flash for supporting the camera. Um, I mentioned the resolution of the screen already, that's uh, 800 by 480. Uh, also a small camera here, that's a VGA, so just um, uh, 0.3 megapixels if you want to count them. Um, yeah, so far, let's boot up the phone. I have already done the, uh, the, uh, the, the first configuration, so um, added it to my Wi-Fi, uh, no sorry, added it to my Wi-Fi um, and also uh, configured a Google account so we can start right away. Uh, it's booting right now. As mentioned before, it already has um, Android 4.1.1 which is not the very latest version but at least a, a rather good standard. There are a lot of phones with 4.0 still out there or even older versions. So I think that's a good uh, point to start off here. So here we are. Um, we have a rather um, decent or rather empty uh, set of home screens here, five screens. There's just the music players widget here, the, the clock. This was added by, by myself. Um, the phone actually doesn't even contain YouTube for, for right from start, start, but you can of course install it from the market. You have just links to the music and the gallery here, and uh, that's basically all. Let's have a quick look at the, the app drawer. Um, it, it contains uh, um, just l less than two pages full of applications. Uh, some of them are already installed by myself uh, while I started testing. So G Reader, Hill Climb Racer, of course, Vector, and as I mentioned, YouTube. Um, uh, have been installed by myself, uh, also Royal Revolt. Uh, what is pre-installed by Mobistel is actually um, almost nothing, so to say. So it's basically the, the, the basic Google appli applications. Um, the only things that I'm not sure of if they are actually a standard Google stuff or Android stuff is the task um, task tool to-do lists. Here we are. Uh, the video player is not in, uh, included in all Android phones, but it's uh, um, but in, in many of them. And we have a wireless input device uh, control thing here where we can configure Bluetooth um, keyboards and mouses for, um, for this phone. Um, one thing that, um, occur, that, that appears at the very first instance or that as you see quickly is that again the keys that we have down here are only lit when actually using the keys. So once they go off, which is normal for battery saving, they they will not go on unless you actually press one of them. This is really awkward for me and a, a, a bad decision, so to say. Um, Mobistel had that in the T1. I was lucky to find it improved on the T2, but they reintroduced that with the with the um, Jelly Bean update also on the T2. So, and here we are again. Uh, once I hit one of those keys it is lit uh, they are lit all three of them but um, this is the only way to make them visible so to say 
this is kind of strange because it's uh, I think it's not the standard case that you use uh, the keys twice or more times in a row so uh, and so the most of the times you're hitting them more or less blindly I, well, you can see them under daylight and of course as it's the standard three buttons it is not that difficult to find them uh, but still why <laughs> um, let's have a look around what else is uh, specific to that phone um, one thing that we see here we have these uh, quick access buttons for um, enabling or disabling Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, the data connection uh, and the airplane mode. Um, to the right hand, hand side of that we have the profiles. There's four default, pro default profiles. Um, you can add more um, profiles and, and reconfigure these four of course. Uh, on the other hand, uh, on the other side there is the um, display configuration. So here you can configure the brightness of the screen, the timeout for um, switching off the screen light and um, auto rotation, which was interestingly switched off when I first started the phone. Um, there's obviously no brightness detector in this phone, so uh, you only have three different levels of brightness and um, no automatic way, uh, automatic modus mode. Um, you can also let's confirm that by looking at the brightness settings here there is no checkbox for automatic that's a pity um, I actually prefer the automatic setting normally let's have a quick look at the settings so uh, one extra point um, that is important for this phone is right now deactivated because I haven't inserted any sim card that's the sim management it's uh, basically the same uh, or I, let's say I expect it to be the same, I haven't really tested it yet as for the other Sinus phones or any other MediaTek phone uh, we have the audio profiles which um, in uh, luckily is similar as the T2 software includes separate um, ringtones for SIM1 and SIM2 again here SIM1, SIM2 and not using the names that you can define and, and use in all, almost every other place where the two SIMs are managed but still you can define different ringtones for the different SIM cards. I think that's a very convenient thing especially if you imagine using one personal SIM card and one business uh, SIM card um, it's, it's, uh, then it's really nice to know what kind of call you're just receiving. Um, I think that's enough for now regarding the software one thing uh, one first impression that I would also like to give you is about the screen um, it is uh, it looks quite nice it is a small screen with uh, this with a resolution of 800 by 480 uh, it looks quite detailed but uh, the viewing angles are not perfect so if you um, go to the sides that's fine also from the bottom but if you go upwards you see that the colors uh, change a lot and even even uh, yeah it, it doesn't it's not only getting darker but also colors are really changing and um, maybe in a menu we can see that a little bit better I'm getting closer here uh, it even sometimes looks very pixelated it looks like there is a kind of mesh in front of the screen um, causing some some interference or whatever I think right now we cannot really see it um, I probably have to find uh, a different sample picture to show that in the in the final review but one thing that you can clearly see for example the grayed out option for some management it, it really disappears depending on the angle you're looking at it that's not so good but it's it's only for when when looking from the top Normally when using the phone you usually tend to probably look more from the bottom and not that much from the top so in the few hours that I've already played around a bit with the phone this hasn't been too um, annoying so maybe it looks worse now looking at it explicitly than uh, in every day use. I'll um, definitely post a full review in German in two or three weeks and uh, depending on the interest here in, in, in the amount of comments and requests coming in for the English version I'll probably also do an English review if you like that. So um, I think that's enough for now. Um, for the end 
uh, let's probably have a quick comparison of uh, with uh, of the size. This is the Alcatel 997D. Let's zoom in a little bit to see them closer. Um, this is a 4.3 incher. I'm putting them. I'm, I'm lining them on the top, and you see the the four incher here um, is just a little bit smaller. Also, it is not really much uh, thinner in, in that sense. It's uh, the, the width is about the same. It's maybe two or three millimeters difference here, and it's actually a little bit thicker. So there is uh, uh, at least two millimeters of a step here that you can't really um, see in that perspective, but here I think you can detect it. So it, it feels a little bit bulky. It is also not very light. Um, that's kind of um, uh, um, disappointing because um, I was uh, looking forward to see a 4-inch phone with a good performance and the MediaTek definitely provides a good performance and that also everything here feels very fluent, very nice. Um, but um, I would have loved to see a smaller phone. Um, Mobistel is giving away a lot of the, the advantage of the small screen with the rather wide um, bevels around, around the display. Um, so it is not much more compact than the average uh, 4.3 incher. This is also not the smallest 4.3 incher, so they might be uh, 4.3 inches that are as small or even smaller than the Mobistel Sinus F3. Well, anyway, there is not a lot to complain about if you have a dual SIM, dual core phone with uh, good specs and a, and a very fluent interface for less than 130 euros. I've just opened um, my page about that uh, that phone uh, showing the 128 offer right now at Red Kuhn in Germany. I'm not sure about the pricing in other countries, but I guess it will be a very... Uh, convenient offer everywhere. It's uh, right now. It's definitely the cheapest dual-core Android phone on the market, um, and it's uh, it's 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 actually a, a good one. Uh, that I can I'm, I'm already sure about that. It might have have some deficiencies. Um, we will see that in the in the extensive test that I'm going to do. But um, the MediaTek um, 6577 is a is a good platform i've seen i've tested three phones based on that phone uh, platform already and it's performant enough for most of the tasks that you want to do unless you want to do high end games um so uh yeah let's see how it performs in real life let me know if you want an english review posted i have seen absolutely no reviews so far on this phone so i guess there will be quite a quite a lot of demand that's why i also created the English unboxing for you. So uh, my name is Klaus from Technophilia. Let me know what you think and um, if you would like to see the final review and um, please give me a thumbs up on the video, um, bookmark my channel. Um, I would love to, to hear from you. See you. Bye.